So three different ideas or strategies that I learned in this course. Um, the first one I want to talk about is differentiated instruction, where um, like just based on the name, I kind of made an assumption about what it is. And I, I assumed that it was like having a highly specific lesson plan for each individual student. And I'm just like, that's, that's insane. That's not feasible. Um, and then when I learned more about it and learned like, oh, it's about giving students a choice in their assignments so they can find an assignment that's like better suited to their strengths. Um, then I was like, oh, that makes sense. I like that. And I remember a few times having that option when I was in school and enjoying it. Um, I remember taking a philosophy course at the junior college and our final had a bunch of different options and I really enjoyed that um, and I benefited from it. Um, and then another idea, concept, um, I enjoyed the discussion we had where it was talking about two different teachers that had different perspectives where one teacher wanted to break the students up based on their competency levels. And then the other teacher wanted to kind of randomly group his students so that the best performing students would be working amongst the poorest performing students. And I remember learn, uh, reading the arguments for the teacher that wanted to break students up based on their competency levels. And I was like, oh, all those arguments make a lot of sense. Like the students will work at similar paces, so no one's getting left behind or no one's finishing way ahead of the rest of the students. Um, they are talking about how it'd be easier on the instructor because um, they don't have to like vary the instruction too much to cater to a bunch of different learning styles. And so yeah, that was making sense to me. And then in preparing to respond to that prompt, um, I read a couple articles and they were saying that the learning outcomes are better when you randomly group the students, when the best performing students are working amongst the poorest performing students. And part of that is because um, the poorest performing students, they will benefit from asking questions of their peers. There's a lot of times where they would be uncomfortable asking these questions to their teacher, they don't wanna raise their hand and ask the question in front of the class, but if they're like in a smaller group with their peers, then they're more comfortable asking questions. And then even the students that understand the curriculum well, they'll benefit from having to um, try to teach it to other students. And then there's also some other um, kind of like unintended consequences of the the students that do perform well, they're also like, um, becoming more understanding and empathetic to other students when they're working alongside of them, you know, like forming a social relationship with them and kind of realizing like, oh, this other student might not, might not understand the curriculum as well as I do, but they have a bunch of other qualities that I like. Like, this is my friend. I like hanging out with this person. Um, and then another concept I wanted to talk about was... Uh, the formative assessments. So I can recall being given formative assessments. And I mean, I guess like on the surface, it, it's obvious, I like, guess yeah, the teachers want to like check where we're at, see what we know. Um, I remember taking in a college level Spanish course. On the first day of class, I was given like a, a really thorough like five page test it, it was not graded and it was just it was a formative assessment just to kind of see where we all were and it, it kind of like tripped me out I don't know I was like what why is this such a thorough test on the very first day of class um, and then I don't know how that professor like used those scores what she did with them how she may or may not have altered her teaching approach after that, but definitely kind of caught me off guard. Um, but there are applications that make a lot of sense to me because we talk a lot about like funds and knowledge and building on the students' 
um, prior knowledge, their things that they already know. And it's like, well, how do we know what they already know? And it's like, well, formative assessments are a great way to find out what they already know. And then you can kind of cater your lesson plan to the students. Now, now you know where they stand on a given subject and you can take that information into consideration when determining how to move forward. Um, yeah, so those are three different concepts that uh, I, I learned about in this course.